In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint black power armor using this Horus Heresy Raven Guard Space Marine as an example. Let's get started. To start with, I applied a pretty general highlight of scale 75 and thoracic gray over a black undercoat. I prefer using bluish grays instead of pure grays over black as I feel it looks a little more interesting and gives the model a bit more color. I next mixed in some scale 75 birch into the anthratic gray I was using before and applied this as a much more targeted highlight. Once again, I choose birch as the highlight color here as I find it provides a far more interesting color than pure white or lighter gray. As many of you who have seen my previous videos probably know, I prefer to paint my models fairly light and then tone down the color with various ink layers. This is because I feel like I get more control when shading with inks and I find that inks go through an airbrush far more easily than acrylic paints. For this model, I decided to use a mix of black and violet ink in the shade. Now you may be wondering why I use violet ink here, and I didn't really have a good reason other than I thought it would look cool and wanted to see how it would turn out. There's probably a whole other video on experimenting with painting colors, but I would encourage you to try out new color combination and paint mixes as you never know what you might discover. And if you hate the result, you can always just paint over top of it. I applied this thin down violet and black ink mixture to all the shadows of the model and built up the shades in about two or three layers. This mixture is fairly thin, and you want to make sure that each layer is fully dried before moving on to the next. Otherwise, the ink might spiderweb or splatter. At this point, I kind of thought the model didn't have enough contrast, and I knocked it down too far with the previous ink step, so I gave the model some extremely targeted highlights with thinned down birch paint. This layer was extremely thinned down, probably like one part paint to four parts thinner, and it's really just to give the hint of color at the highest points of the Marine's armor. Once I've gotten the model to my liking, I spray it with a thin down gloss varnish layer to prepare for the oil wash coming up next. This step is also really interesting for this model, as the gloss varnish significantly darkens the model and makes it look more black. I didn't realize it at the time, but this darkening effect that the gloss varnish provides really threw off my take on what the model actually looked like and will come back and bite me when I go to matte down the varnish later on. Normally I would just kind of stop at this step and redo the entire model to have a better color scheme for all you viewers but I thought it'd be interesting to leave this in to show you all how gloss varnish can really affect the color you see, as well as how to correct it if you do get to a point that you're not quite happy with the results of your model. I used a fairly standard oil wash of Lamp Black Oil Paint from Windsor Newton, thinned down with white spirits here. As I was trying to darken the model down a bit, I decided to apply this oil wash very liberally over the entire model with the hope that the oil paint would stain the acrylic paint underneath it. This can go on fairly messily, and you can always wipe away any excess oil paint later on. After the oil had completely dried, I next go back and use a sponge makeup remover to wipe away any excess oil paint. I focus here only on areas that I want to be highlighted, and leave the oil paint in the shadows of the model. This step is slightly different than when I normally use oil washes, as I leave the oil paint not only in the recesses of the armor, but also where I want the flat armor paints of the model to be shaded too. For the highest points of the armor that I want to be the most light, I also dip the makeup remover into some white spirit prior to wiping the oil off the model. By doing this, I remove almost all of the oil paint and get a very nice highlight effect. Next, I spray the entire model with thinned down gloss varnish to lock in the oils and to prepare the model for the decals coming up. There's not really too much to say about decals here, as I really just put a single decal on the marine shoulder pad and left it at that. After the decal dried, I just hit the model with some ultramat varnish from AKA Interactive to kill all of the gloss from the previous gloss varnish steps. This might be a bit obvious to some of you, but the finish of an object impacts how our eyes perceive the color of that item. For example, we perceive glossy objects as much richer in color and more saturated than matte objects. I'm mentioning this here because I felt the model looked rather black and was pretty happy with it prior to putting the matte varnish on, but afterwards I found the model looked a lot more gray. I was a little bummed at first with the development and almost considered scrapping the model and starting again, but I soon realized that I could salvage it with a few more steps. To save the model, I made a black glaze and just brushed it into the shadows. For those of you that have not used a glaze before, they're really just thinned down paints and are great for getting smooth transitions of color. There are a few tricks to properly using glazes, like not overloading your brush with thin paint and to always brush towards your shadows or darkest parts of the model, but they are pretty forgiving and a great tool to have in your painting arsenal. After two or three layers, the model was reading as black again and I was really happy with how this looked. As mentioned previously, Next time I do a black marine, I'll probably do this a little bit differently, but I wanted to leave this in here to show y'all how you could salvage a paint scheme that's not going quite the way you wanted it to, with a few simple steps. As many of you probably know by now, I prefer to sponge chip the edges of my model's armor instead of edge highlighting them. This is partially due to the fact that sponging is easier, 
but it's mainly because I prefer my models to look more beat up and war torn, and I feel like the sponge shipping method helps convey that look much more than clean and crisp edge highlights. For this Raven Guard, I only did a single layer of sponge shipping using heavy metal from scale 75. I lightly sponged the silver around the edges of the armor and other places where the paint would naturally chip off. It's also okay here if you go a little bit overboard, as any errant chips will just look like the paint flaked off. There are also a few places that the sponge shipping did not easily reach, and in those cases, I took a fine detail brush and lightly stippled on silver paint around the edges of the armor. If you're not familiar with stippling, it's pretty much just lightly tapping your brush edge to the edge of the armor, as opposed to painting in a clean straight line, as this gives the highlight a much more haphazard and random appearance, kind of like chipped paint, than a straight line would. The metallic ribbing around the Marine's knees and elbows, as well as the cabling across the Marine's chest and backpack, were first painted with Scale 75 Heavy Metal and then washed with Nuln Oil by Games Workshop. This is a very simple technique and easy way to paint metal, but looks pretty good and gets your models painted on tabletop quickly. If you want to bring back some of the shine after the wash is dried, you can always re-highlight this metal with Heavy Metal again. The eye lenses were painted with a fairly simple technique that's rapidly growing on me, and I'm finding I'm using more and more in painting my Space Marine eye lenses. To start with, I paint the eye lens with a bright silver, in this case, Scale Center have Speed Metal, and then wash the entire lens with a Game Workshop shade. I used Camberg Crimson here to get a nice red color. Finally, I apply a small dot of Speed Metal to both the top and bottom corners of the eyes to represent light glinting off the spherical eye lens. This step isn't purely necessary, but I find it gives the model a little extra visual interest that looks really good when viewed up close. I have started to use the same sponge shipping technique on the bolters of my models as I use elsewhere, as I figured that these tools of war would get rather beat up in the field and should at least match the same wear as the armor. So all I do is sponge on some Scale 75 Heavy Metal over the black undercoat. I also paint the other metallic areas of the bolter with Heavy Metal and then wash them with Nuln Oil, much like the cabling on the rest of the model. All that was left was to put the model on the base, and the model's finished. Hopefully this showed you not only how to paint Raven Guard Space Marines, but also gave you some tips and tricks you can use when painting other things black as well. If you liked this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, as it really helps this channel to grow, and seeing the number of subscribers go up keeps me motivated to keep putting out more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll be on.